Ready to go? It's been a record-breaking wet and cold winter in California, leaving homes, cars, and even mailboxes crushed under the weight of so much snow and ice. Avalanches and flooding played havoc along our beloved US 395, breaking pipelines, overflowing riverbanks, and closing access to many communities. By early April, nighttime temperatures in the valley were above freezing, and Caltrans had cleared the avalanche on 395 that was blocking access north of Lee Vining. It is 646, and we are headed to the Eastern Sierra. John has some a meeting up there. And this is the first chance we've had since the uh, since the US 395 reopened after the avalanche. And we're only going for four nights. And I'm really excited to see how much snow there is up there. And I better do something about that before that dries and freezes. We were made for each other to hold on to. of yellow in the distance and he said could those be flowers and I said no they are it's amazing this is a carpet of yellow John has pointed out the red on the side of this hill up here he thinks it's flowers I first said no but I think he might be right we are going to stop at Fossil Falls, which is just a few miles up the road. And I'm thinking maybe there'll be water actually in the falls. On to Fossil Falls. Between 10 and 20,000 years ago, glacial snow melt flowed over a basalt flow, polishing and reshaping the rocks into unique forms. Continued erosion through a process called plunge pool erosion caused the falls to retreat and create its narrow mouth. Megan. It is nice to be back in the Eastern Sierra. We're just gonna stop to see if there's water. And we're gonna take a look at the flowers. Keep your eye out for rattlesnakes and rocks that wanna trip you up. No flatties, no crashies, no whammies. <laughs> dry as a bone, but it's always beautiful. go have lunch. So this nice man that we just talked to said, walk up the river a bit and then you'll find uh, more of the matades and the grinding areas and lots of obsidian chips. And so we're gonna head up and it just goes to show you, as much as you've been here, I've not done this. Oh, look at those yellow flowers, John. I have never seen that before. Let's look it up. End. Oh, I forgot you're, I forgot you're still injured. Native Americans have historically used the area to camp and chip obsidian to make tools. Wow, now we're really getting into the obsidian chips. They're just all over. Really, they're everywhere. It's almost like pavement. This one, they were mass producing points. Wow, all the way up there. So what's this one called? It's 
desert globe mallow. Lunchtime, you want to eat here? What do? Yeah, I'm hungry. Okay. Peanut butter and jelly. With some corn chips? Is that what you want? Yeah, why not? Okay, where'd I put them? Oh. I think they're in here. Today, it's hard to imagine that across Owens Lake, there was once the terminus of the Carson and Colorado Railroad at the bustling town of Keeler with a population of 5,000. Now the 71 hardy souls who still call it home live adjacent to the largest single source of dust pollution in the U.S. There is so much hidden history along U.S. 395, from steamboats that transported goods across the now dry Owens Lake, to the Japanese internment camp at Manzanar, to World War II training facilities, and of course, early American Indian camps. A stop at the U.S. Forest Service Visitor Center south of Lone Pine has a great bookstore as well as camping and hiking information. That's how warm it is, she's wearing flip-flops. That's how warm it is. 75. Snow in the White Mountains, snow in the Sierra. Pretty snow healthy. on my head. Snow on your head. <laughs> there are four BLM campgrounds in the Owens Valley, and we'll stay at all of them this week. They may not look like much from a Google Earth perspective, but for just a few bucks, they provide the basics. Vault toilets, sometimes water, and beautiful vistas. Our first stop is Pleasant Valley Pit. Wow, that's a pretty decent sight. The White Mountains really are white today. We have arrived at our campground. We are at The Pit, which is a BLM campground just north of Bishop. And the reason it's called The Pit is because it used to be a, um, it was a gravel pit. There's a dam not far from here. And uh, they used it to uh, take materials for the building of the dam. This is the gravel pit. It's pretty crowded too. It's because anything north of here is closed. But, Spectacular views. Look at that. It's amazing. Five dollars or two fifty with the senior access pass. I will show you where we are. This is the campground right here. It says PV Pit, which stands for Pleasant Valley Pit. There is a county campground right below, but they said it was closed because of flooding. And this is the Owens River. This is where the dam was built, where they took the rocks and stuff from here. It's right there. And, and 395 continues north. We're gonna have an early dinner and probably an early bed. Watch our favorite Sunday YouTubes. So just some soup and rice. You were walking around for a couple hours with your pants on backwards? Wow. Yep. <laughs> That's cool. Where did I go? Why? I don't know what I... Did I go in that store with them on backwards? I bet you I put them... I was trying on pants. I think I put them on backwards then. And they okay. fit better? No. I just... <laughs> okay, stop recording. I gotta put my pants on. What are you doing now? Well, I'm just going to tell everybody that I had a, a little bit of a spill on my bike the other day and I still got kind of bruises and how, how I thought in the middle of the night last night, I would rather be uncomfortable next to her than anyone else around. <laughs> Especially your brother. <laughs> <laughs> and what was your response? Uh, I don't know. La, 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 la. <laughs> so let me tell you the real story about John's fall. It was a week ago Sunday and... It was a pretty nasty fall. Uh, he, I, I'm surprised he could ride afterwards, but he didn't complain until he got home. And then he started whining like a you-know-what. 
and we thought it was cracked ribs, took them to the, whatever they call those emergency places, and got the results the next day, and it turned out it was bruised, uh, which is, isn't quite as bad. So hopefully he'll recover soon enough that we can get out on the bikes again. I should add, because I know a lot of you think we're just too old to be doing this stuff, but the truth is it wasn't age-related necessarily. He was trying to squeeze through this narrow opening, had a big shrub on one side and a wall on the other, and he caught his shoulder and he went down really hard. He also, besides his rib cage, look at that huge knot on his leg. And this has now been eight days later. And then he's got another one down here. That is really ugly, John. <laughs> well, you've got ugly <laughs> legs anyway. It is 47 degrees. We are at 4,500 feet and we're going up to 7,000, which is why this is as far north as you can get on 395 before you run into nighttime temperatures <laughs> below freezing. But what a beautiful morning. And we're gonna be going past Mammoth Lakes. Some of you may have been following what's been going on up there all winter. We follow a YouTube channel. The guy posts, I don't know, a couple, couple, three times a week. And basically it's all about shoveling snow. <laughs> it's a shoveling snow channel. It's called Life in the Eastern Sierra. Lots of roof collapses and they've had some explosions from propane tanks. I'll insert some, some pictures. My son uh, used to live in Mammoth and uh, he has friends up there and they've been sending him pictures. Of course, it's bad where he is in Tahoe, but not as much as it is in Mammoth. There's a reason they put the ski resort in Mammoth Lakes. Uh, 30 feet walls of, of snow and uh, it's pretty incredible. And of course, it's just a very small town and they just don't have the resources to, uh, to do everything. We have about 100 miles to go this morning. John has to be there at 10 and so a couple hours. And uh, I'm sure a lot of the snow has already melted, but it uh, should be interesting. Snow. That is snow dumped there probably from Mammoth. Amazing. Mammoth couldn't find enough places to dump their snows. I guess they came all the way down here. That's... Where else could it have come from? Nowhere else. Wow. Let's go outside. The snow is falling down, and every child is having so much fun. A snowman is twice the size as me with a smile as quirky as mine. Valley Lake. And in a while we're gonna go inside and drink our chocolate by the fire Cause all I want is to spend this day with you Never ever seen Crowley covered in snow So there must be some ice on there Wow, what an amazing sight This is really amazing Twenty-six degrees, according to the thermometer in the van. Making plans, what we're gonna do? I feel so blessed that I can be with you. Cause God knows that I've been long be for you. Yeah, I just wanna hold you close. You know the stars are shining just for you. Let's take a walk. And we can follow the moon like till we reach a place we can stay. Lake. Maybe kiss a bit and dream Let's away. We get lots of water this year. And in a while we're gonna go inside and drink our chocolate by the fire. Cause all I want is to spend this day with you. We are you. coming up on Lee Vining, which is right adjacent to Mono Lake. And oh, what, what was it? A couple months ago, they had an avalanche that cut off 395. Uh, which kind of isolated everybody. But the real issue was that there's a chain, there's kind of a chain link covering over the mountain, over the side of the mountain, because rocks fall on the highway all the time. 
and that had, had been, I guess, taken down by the avalanche. So they had to replace that or somehow get it resecured. It's right there on the left. It's all that dirty muck. Yeah, you can see, look, they clear. Look, 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 all the trees are down. Oh, yes. Okay, they piled it on the other side of the road. Oh yeah, see there's the chain. Yeah, knocked down. Yeah. It's definitely more water in the lake. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you can see the piles of debris from the Nope. This is not a sight you'll probably ever see again. And now we're coming up on Conway Summit. So we are now coming up into Bridgeport, and Bridgeport was completely isolated once that avalanche hit uh, because the route coming in from the north was also closed because of snow. Was it just the amount of snow, John? Yeah. Yeah, there's actually two ways into Bridgeport from the north, but both got closed, so they were completely isolated. This is also one of those towns you do not want to exceed the speed limit. Any of these towns along 395. Do not exceed the speed limit. Not many services here, but this is the county seat. And there is a nice little park that we often stop and have lunch or something like that. There's There are restrooms there that are open year round. They are heated so they can keep them open. And a cute little courthouse. It's featured in a movie with Robert Mitchell. Oh, really? What movie was it? Do you remember? Oh, you are going to use the restroom? Okay. Here it is. And they have a little 4th of July parade every year. Uh, they have visitor center. Restroom. And a good spot for lunch. But that's not for us today. You don't want to fill up here, though. Diesel is six forty nine dollars a gallon. We are just about there. Twenty six percent uphill grade. That's also closed up ahead. <laughs> one lane, really. Like the one up there that's you know, one sixty eight, is it? Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look at the water. Wow. It's Walker Creek. Yeah. Walker. What's the name of this campground? Do you remember? Sonora Bridge. Oh yeah, Sonora Bridge. Yep. Sonora Bridge. I'll be closed for a while. Yeah. <laughs> we just hit the biggest pothole. I think we took an inch out of our tire to check that one out. That was nasty. Okay, I'm just going to leave you guys here and we'll catch up in a few hours. So we're done with business and now on to goof off for a few days. And where do you think we should go first? Well, I think camp at Goodale tonight and see, uh, see our friend. I think his name is Keith, the camp host. Let's see if he's still there, how his winter was. Oh, here is the hole that John hit. Right there. Oh my God, that was brutal. Look at that. Oh, it is open. Not much of it is open, but some of it. Oh, they're gonna go skiing? Oh man, we gotta see that. There's some young people that are gonna try to ski over here, so we're gonna get out and see if we can get some video. Yes, I got snow in my boots. That's, those are our cars down there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Standing above the kiosk at the lookout. Oh, 
there. Okay, so that's where they parked. Parked in the wind sock. Yes, there's a piece missing because John offered it to Guy, who was stopped for him to cross the road. <laughs> and the guy said, thanks, I was starving. <laughs> anyway, we're starving too, so we stopped for pizza and mammoth. We got a spot at Goodale Creek again. We like this spot and the weather is so nice. There's a dirt road not too far away. We're gonna hike up it. But first, we're gonna put some blocks in the back, get level. We've come to a fork in the road. I think we'll go left. But look at that beautiful cinder cone ahead of us in the big pine volcanic field. There's another one over here. And then across the valley. seen you here before not a coincidence i'm sure i hope you're looking at me now from the corner of your eye so You were dancing a second ago to Frankie That's Valley. Why you did it. Grease no. is the word. No, I ain't doing it. Grease is the no. word, is the word. I ain't doing it. Oh, man. Good morning, Tuesday. Ah, and it's an amazing morning. We are going to go out and uh, do some geocaching today. There's a spot right over here that somebody has stashed something. I've never done it before, but that should be a really easy one. We actually walked there yesterday, and then we're going to mosey on down to the Alabama Hills. And right now there's no wind, which is beautiful. There's no water at this campground, but you could easily collect water from the creek and filter it, and it would be perfectly fine to drink. It's going to be somewhere in here. I bet you it's somewhere around that tree. Here it is. I found it. <laughs> okay, let's look inside. It says be sure to sign it. needs a new bag. Okay. And pencil. Oh. Okay, what was the last time? 4-6. 4-6, uh, which was just a few days ago. Today's the 11th? Yep. Would you go ahead and here? Yeah, you sign you it. Right. Got, uh, what is that? Oh, I don't know, it looks like tank hounds. A lone granger. I don't know what these are. Some kind of trading cards, it looks like. Okay. <laughs> we'll have to get little things to put. Whoops. I have to get some things to put inside. What else is in here? Pencil and <sighs> a broken keychain. Okay. 
Got our first geocache success. I was about to give up. So it's just like that? Just like that. I'm gonna turn it this way. Well, that was fun. <laughs> it makes you feel like a kid again. There are definitely clouds coming in, which means maybe we'll have a good sunset tonight. John's putting away the blocks and we're gonna go off and explore some of these side roads I ha that I haven't been to in a very long time. I'm gonna see if they're washed out. up to the Sawmill Pass Trailhead where I hiked this. I hiked Sawmill Pass back in 1978 with my brother and his wife before they moved back for before they moved to Spokane. And uh, I'm gonna see if I can get to the trailhead. It is a really difficult pass because you start at around I think 4,200 feet, 4,000 feet, and you go up to like 11,000 feet. This is the powerhouse, uh, DWP's facilities. A little sketchy. Yep. Definitely want some higher clearance here. Another car at the trailhead. I'm almost positive they moved the trailhead. It used to be over closer to the the stream that comes right out of the that rugged V shape of the canyon. One thing I remember the most about this hike was the Nasty biting flies. The first night we camped in a meadow area and the flies were awful. How are you feeling? Good. How are you? Good. We're going to stop right here. I was hoping to get to the edge over there, but that's still a fur climb. And we are almost, well, we're just above the uh, cinder cone. And there is Aberdeen straight ahead. And our Goodale campground, I can see some of the trailers down there. Boop. And there is White Mountain Peak. Oh, there's so many cinder cones. Climbed about a uh, thousand feet and 1.35 miles. So, ballpark, 20% grade. That's pretty good. That's a pretty steep grade. So, here's the geology question. You got all that granite over there spewed on top of the cinder cone. So, when did the, gl so the glacier, this is the glacial moraine here. So, we had cell service and I had to look it up. So there are 40 cinder cones in, the, in this area. And this one in front of us is about 12,000 years old. The glacier eroded the cone and that's, and that's what came later. So now you know. was a great hike. Let's see, we went uh, 2.7 miles. Uh. Next stop, Alabama Hills. Uh, 
drive doesn't go all the way through, so we come down Black Rock Springs. clamped down on camping up here and there's a berm right in front of one that says you can where you can camp so John's got the shovel out he's gonna go see if he can knock that down so we can get in there We've come into Tuttle Creek because there was nothing at in the Alabama Hills, and it's twice the price of Goodale. It's kind of amazing. Great night here at Tuttle Creek, and we're going to head off to the Alabama Hills. Even though we couldn't camp there, we're going to go over and explore a little bit before we head to our fourth and last BLM campsite for this little trip at uh, Fossil Falls. And yesterday we ran into a viewer, <laughs> uh, Lennis, and that was we had a great conversation. She's also from Cincinnati, so we talked a little bit about Cincinnati stuff. And then another woman overheard us, and she said, "Are you guys Buckeyes?" So she was another third Buckeye. I noticed they just turned the water on. So we're going to fill up. We're almost out of fresh of our drinking water. a beautiful spot for the day, at least for the morning. You can explore some of these rocks. It is easy to get lost back here. Okay, I found my way back, I think. Big salad for lunch and then go for a walk down this dirt road. You know, women have the right to bear arms too. This is called shark spin. You kind of get the idea of a shark in the water. It kind of looks like one. We're 
we're gonna stop at the charcoal kilns. Haven't been here in a couple of decades. Wow, I guess they were trying to protect it, so blew off. It is strange the way our memories work, but this is not what I remember seeing. And of course, somebody had to steal the plaque. This is interesting. dollars for us and they had envelopes that's good should we try up top see if there's a spot up there perfectly level <laughs> it is so green here site number one it's huge we have never seen flowers on the cinder cone. No garbage collection. Get it in there. This is the fourth BLM campground of our trip. We're heading home tomorrow because I volunteered for a plant sale at our local community college. The total cost for camping at these campgrounds has been $13. They don't take reservations. It's first come, first serve, but we've never not gotten a spot at one of these. And of course, they're really mostly for spring, fall, uh, maybe winter if you're a tough camper, um, but not in the summertime, way too hot. And what an incredible week to be up here after this amazing winter that we had in California. The only thing left to do tonight is to get a time lapse because it looks like we might have a beautiful sunset. Probably not going to get a sunrise because we need to get on the road fairly early. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.